ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله All praise is due to Allah, we praise Him and seek His assistance. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the evil of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide Him. Yet whomever He allows to go astray, none can guide Him. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone. He has no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is His servant and His messenger. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. O you who believe, fear Allah as you should be feared, and do not die except in the state of Islam. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سليدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم. ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. O you who believe, fear Allah and speak the truth. He will direct you to do righteous good deeds and will forgive your sins. And whomsoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, he has indeed achieved a great achievement. Amma ba'd, fa inna asqaq al-hadithi kitab Allah. Wa ahsan al-hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa shar al-umuri muhdathatuha. Wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a. Wa kulla bid'atin dalala. Wa kulla bid'atin finna. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Today we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for His servants. And Allah azza wa jalla loving His servants, it is something that is so rarely spoken about to the point that the concept seems Christian to many people. But it is completely an Islamic concept. And one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He is Al-Wadud, which means the loving. And in fact, the scholars say that love is the essence of worship and the essence of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah Azza wa says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, man yartadda minkum an deeni, fa sawfa yati allahu bi qawmin yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna. Allah Azza wa in this verse says, O you who believe, whoever of you abandons his religion, whoever of you leaves his religion, then indeed Allah is going to come forth with a people that He loves and they love Him back. So what is interesting about this verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, the concept of love in their relationship. He didn't say they obey Him or they worship Him or they fear Him, but they love Him back. And the verse begins with Allah loving them first. That He loves and then they love Him back in return. So that means then, what our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based upon, it is actually based upon love. What is interesting is that in Surah Al-Buruj specifically, in Surah Al-Buruj, Allah azza wa ends one verse by saying, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ And He is the most forgiving, the loving, the wadud. And the scholars say, what usually matches ghafoor is rahim. Because ghafoor, forgiving, and mercy, they go together better. And that's why 69 times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ghafoorun rahim, ghafoorun rahima. But in this one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the most forgiving and the loving. Only one time in the Quran. And the scholars explain, because someone might wrong you, and you might forgive them, but still dislike them. You might forgive someone and actually continue hating them even though you, for, you have forgiven them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to know that He will forgive you from committing a sin and still keep loving you. And that's why He said, wadud," And He is the most forgiving and the loving. And the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving His servants even if they sin, we see this other places in the Quran. Famous verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin Indeed, Allah loves those who constantly repent and He loves those who purify themselves. So the question is that, in, and for sure, in order to constantly repent, you have to constantly sin. Because we can agree, you cannot repent from nothing. So that means if someone constantly repents, they can still be loved by Allah as long as they constantly, I mean, if someone constantly sins, 
they can still be loved by Allah as long as you constantly repent. As long as you constantly run back to Allah with tawbah and repentance and regret, Allah will love that individual, even if they keep sinning. So then far be it from the shaitan to try to come between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to make you unwor feel unworthy, or try to make you feel too dirty to return and rush back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we were to contemplate what would be the effects of worshipping a Lord that you believe hated you? Meaning, it's so dangerous for Muslims to feel that they're not loved by Allah or for a believing man or woman to feel that they're hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would be the effects of believing that your Lord hated you? Would you be energetic in wanting to worship a Lord that hates you? Would you want to spend hours talking to him, making dua, pleading and asking him if you believe he hated you? Would you even think that he would answer your dua if he hates you? Or that he would forgive you? Or that you have a chance to ever enter Jannah if your Lord, your Creator hates you? Or even have a chance with a Lord that hated you? Would you even love him back if you believe, if you believe he hated you? And that's why this topic is so important. One of the Christian scholars, he conducted a study amongst Christian churchgoers to see which, according to them, of the three Godhead the Christians love the most. And he found that overwhelmingly, the majority of Christians love what they believe to be God the Son much more than God the Father. Why? Because God the Father was the angry one who could not forgive for thousands of years, while God the Son is the loving one who gave up his life to come and die for their sins so they can be saved. So what it shows is that people will naturally gravitate to a loving God. And people will naturally gravitate to a God that they believe loves them, as opposed to one that is angry with them. So then the question is, what are the fruits and the benefits of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you? What happens to you as a human being on earth if Allah Azza loves you from above his throne? In Sahih Bukhari, narrated by Abu Huraira and Nabi Sallallahu mentions that إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ الْعَبْدِ If Allah loves a servant, نَادَ جِبْرِيلِ He calls Jibreel. And he tells Jibreel, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فُلَانًا فَأَحِبَّهُ Indeed, Allah loves so and so, so you love him. فَيُحِبُّهُ جِبْرِيلِ So Jibreel will immediately love him. He doesn't say, let me watch him for a week and go to love him. Immediately, Jibreel will love that individual. فَيُنَادِي جِبْرِيلُ فِي السَّمَاءِ Then Jibreel will call out in the heavens and say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فُلَانًا فَأَحِبُّهُ Indeed, Allah loves so and so, so you love him. So now Allah loves the person. Jibreel loves that person. Jibreel calls out to all the angels in the heavens. Love that person. فَيُحِبُّهُ أَهْلُ السَّمَاءِ So then everyone in the heavens, all the angels in the heavens, would love that individual. ثُمَّ يُوضَعْ لَهُ الْقَبُولِ فِي الْأَرْضِ then acceptance will be placed for him on the earth. And acceptance here means love. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause people on earth to love that individual as well. This is just one of the fruits of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a believing man or woman. So then the real question becomes, how do we attain that love of Allah Meaning, how can we get Allah to love us? Because every Muslim on earth, whether they pray or not, and they commit sins or not, they will say that they love Allah Azza And so the scholars say the real question is, does Allah Azza love you? So it behooves us to understand how can we attain, get the love of Allah Azza One of the ways is by obeying and following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Surah Al Imran, Allah Azza says, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah. Say, if you truly love Allah, then follow me, follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah will love you by following and obeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will love you and will forgive your sins and Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. So that means then that the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just something that is optional, that if we have time for, we'll do it, and if we don't have time for, it's okay, we can discard it. But it is something, it is a way to attain one of the greatest things on this earth. It is a way to attain the love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith in Sahih Bukhari, narrated by Abu Huraira, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah ta'ala qal, so Allah, this is a Qudsi hadith, Allah Azza wa said, 
Whoever shows enmity towards a wali, a close friend of mine, I will declare war against him. Ada, يعني, uh, or Ada, يعني Ada, وأبغض, وأبغض بالقول والفعل. So someone who shows hatred or angers physically or verbally one of the close friends of Allah. This is the animosity. Any kind of showing hatred towards them, angering them physically or verbally, this is now what it means to be, to show enmity towards a wali. Man adali waliyan. So the question becomes, who is the wali that we translate as close friend in English? Who is the wali, the close friend of Allah then? Some of the scholars said, al-alim, the scholar, a top level scholar, this is a wali of Allah. So if you show animosity to a wali of Allah, then Allah will declare war against you. But then other scholars said, no, it is not just the alim, but they said that a mu'min, any believing man or woman can be a wali of Allah, or any believing man or woman is a wali of Allah. And then they use the verse as evidence, Allah in the Quran says, Allahu waliyul ladina amanu. Allah is the wali of those who believe. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Tamir rahimahullah, he said, مَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا تَقِيًّا كَانَ لِلَّهِ وَلِيًّا Whoever is a believer and has taqwa, is God conscious of Allah, then he is a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala automatically. So then anyone who shows any enmity or animosity towards a wali of Allah azza wa jal, فَقَدْ أَهَدَنْتُهُ بِالْحَوْبِ يعني Allah azza wa jal will declare war against him. And Ibn Tamir rahimahullah said, وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِذَا حَارَبَ الْعَبْدْ أَهْلَكَهُ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he declares war against a servant, he will completely destroy him. So then the scholar said, beware of having enmity towards any Muslim, because you don't know who is that person in the masjid or in the community that you might belittle, but he is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you. And what is amazing, brothers and sisters, is that even as you're studying your relationship with Allah azza wa jal, it intersects with your behavior and your dealings with others. And that's why the scholar said, beware of, who you sh of, of showing enmity to any of the Muslims because they might be a wali of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So then the hadith continues after that. وَمَا تَقَرَّبْ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا فَتَرَبْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ My servant will not, will not draw near to me with anything more beloved to me than what I have made obligatory upon him. يعني, the most of beloved of actions that you can do is to do something that Allah made fard obligatory. Tarattuhu alayh, fard obligatory upon you. So the fard fast is more beloved to Allah than the voluntary. The fard salah, more beloved to Allah than the voluntary. Remember, in this hadith, we're trying to see how you can gain the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the hadith continues, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبْ إِلَيْهِ بِالنَّوَافِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ And my servant will continue, لَا يَزَالُ the scholars say, shows that this person is continuing. So for a while and for a period of time, he's insistent upon it and he's continuing to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a nawafil. The nawafil are not just the extra prayers, but it's anything that is voluntary on your behalf. So it's not just salah, but sadaqah as a nafila, umrah as a nafila, fasting as a nafila, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy showed and gave many avenues through which we can obey him and draw near to him. So any of the nawafil. So Allah says then that my servant will continue to draw near to me with the nawafil until I love him. And then the hadith continues that and if I love them, I will become their hearing with which they hear and their eyes with which they see and their hand with which they strike and their leg with which they walk. Meaning the scholars say that the person, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them, will only hear and do, not hear or do anything except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. In other words, Allah subhanahu will protect their body parts from doing things that are haram. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And then the hadith finishes off by saying, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّا And if he asks me, I will give him. Ask Allah azza wa jal, if Allah loves you, He will give you. And if He seeks refuge, seeks my protection, I will grant Him that protection. All these are the benefits of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. So that means then, right now we have 
following and obeying the Prophet وسلم, will gain the love of Allah Azza wa to continuously performing the nawafil. Continuously performing the nawafil, no matter what they are, will gain you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then a third one that is super easy to gain the love of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that is, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith, narrated by Muslim Imam Ahmad says, حَقَّتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَابِينَ فِي That my love is guaranteed for those who love each other for my sake. Then the hadith continues, and those who visit each other for my sake, and those who help one another for my sake. And some scholars say they help one another financially for my sake. And those who uphold ties with one another for my sake. Yani, they keep in touch with each other just for the sake of Allah Azza wa Just these simple things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love is guaranteed for these people who love each other for his sake, visit each other for his sake, help each other for his sake, and keep in contact with each other for his sake. This concept we see in another hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, narrated by Abu Huraira about the man who is going to another village to visit his friend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him an angel. And the angel asked him, where are you going? And he says, to visit my brother. So the angel asked him, have you any favor to ask him or to, or to do to him? And the man said, no. I have no desire except that to visit him because I love him for the sake of Allah. So then the angel tells him, I am a messenger of Allah to you from Allah to inform you that Allah loves you as you have loved him for his sake. Something so simple. Loving each other for the sake of Allah Azza Not for wanting any wealth or any benefit out of it. Just loving each other for the sake of Allah Azza And you are granted the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. A beautiful reminder in this hadith, brothers and sisters, is that we should also visit one another. And visit one another in our homes. And it's not enough to just socialize in the masjid because we constantly see each other. So we stop visiting each other. Or if I want to take you somewhere, we go to a restaurant to eat. But there is no comparison between inviting someone to a restaurant to eat and inviting them in your home. So we also should not abandon this sunnah of visiting each other and inviting each other into our homes. With that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are loved by Him. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم من جميع الذنوب فاستغفروا فيا فوز المستغفرين ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His forgiveness. Surely those who ask for His forgiveness shall prosper. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد uh, if we could ask people to come forward and also move the line tighter in this way please so we can make room for people standing in the back just take your lines please there is something that we need to bear be aware of that can happen if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you in Sunan and Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, they both narrate that the Prophet وسلم, in one hadith says, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَدْ إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people, He might test them. He might test them with difficulty. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرُّضَى So whoever is pleased, Allah عز will be pleased with them. And whoever is angered, Allah عز will be angry with them. In another hadith, also in Nabi Sallallahu in Surah Al-Tirmidhi, mentions that إِذَا أَرَضَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ عَجِّلَ لَهُ الْعُقُوبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا If Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala wants good for His servant, He rushes the difficulty and punishment for him in this life. And if He doesn't like a servant, He will leave the punishment until He meets it in the next life. Some of the scholars said this hadith is specific to the hypocrite. That the hypocrite, Allah Azza wa does not test them in this life, so they receive all their sins on the Day of Judgment. But the real question, brothers and sisters, someone might ask, what kind of love is this? And how could it be that if Allah Azza wa Jal loves me, He will test me with difficulty? So in this case, is it better to be loved or not? If Allah Azza wa Jal loves me, He tests me. Why wouldn't He test those He, he doesn't like, those that He does not like? So the way to understand this is that, first of all, we are people who believe in the next life as well. So we don't calculate everything with this present dunya that's in front of our eyes. What would be a greater blessing than to come forth on the Day of Judgment with zero sins? Every time someone is tested with a difficulty, it takes away from their sins. 
If you're ill, it takes away from your sins. Even if you're cold, suffering in the cold weather, it takes away from your sins. If someone embarrasses you publicly, it takes away from your sins. And the Prophet said, Hatta shawka yushabuha. Even the thorn pricks your finger, it takes away from your sins. Any difficulty you encounter in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes from your sins. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you, it's that test is taking away from your sins. And so many tests that perhaps some people will come on the Day of Judgment with zero sins. And some people will come with just a small amount as opposed to mountains. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them and that removed from their sins. If that's the case then, do you see how it's a blessing when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why Allah subhanahu wa would test someone that he loves so that they benefit in the next life. And that's why Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he used to say, had it not been for calamities, we would come forth bankrupt on the Day of Judgment. So that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He loves a servant, He starts to remove all these sins from him. And He is pleased with that result on the Day of Judgment. The second is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you, that brings you closer to Him. It brings a believing man or woman closer to Allah azza wa jal. And the whole point is when you love someone, you want them to be close to you. And one of the most effective ways to bring humans closer to their Lord is when they're in times of need. Compare the dua of someone who is in a dire and desperate situation to the dua of someone else where everything is going well in his life. Compare the qiyam of someone who is in dire need and a desperate situation to the qiyam of the person where everything is going well in their life. Perhaps they might not be even any qiyam. One of the people that we met told us that they had a calamity in their life. Allah Azza wa tested them with a difficulty. So they woke up for Qiyam al for the night prayer, for a year and a half. Never once in a year and a half did they miss Qiyam al which means they never missed Isha, and they never missed Fajr either. For a year and a half, they would get up and pray Qiyam al because they were tested and they had a difficult situation. Then they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixed that problem. And seven years later, I've never once gotten up for Qiyam al Not only that, constantly missing Fajr. This is the difference between when there's a difficult situation and ease. And that's the nature of human beings. But of course, the best of people are the ones that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during times of difficulty and during times of ease. But now we see how, why, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a people, he tests them. He brings them closer to him. They're more sincere in their worship. They get nearer to him and they get the benefit of expiating their sins on the Day of Judgment and inshallah meeting Allah Azza with zero to little sin because of these tests. The last thing we'll close with brothers and sisters is an important point, something to not be misunderstood from this khutbah. The concept that we discussed of Allah Azza testing his servants that he loves, this is not a reversible concept, which means if everything is going well in your life, you say that means Allah doesn't love me. Because Allah only tests those that He loves. So if I'm not being tested, that means I'm not loved by Allah. And this is only falsehood from the shaitan trying to come between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best of people are those who excel in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal at times of ease and they excel at times of difficulty as well. So if you're in times of ease right now, then draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're being tested right now, and unfortunately many times some people are being tested, which is an invitation, Allah Azza is saying, come near to me. And when they're tested, they run away from Allah, and run away from Salah, and run away from Taqwa and righteousness, and dull, indulge into sins. So beware, beware, and make sure that you're always trying, striving in your life, whether at times of difficulty or at times of ease, always strive to come near to Allah Azza wa With that, we ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to make us of those amongst those that him, whom he loves. And we, to make us of those that love him back. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us of those who recognize the truth as clear truth and follow the best of it. And to make us of those who recognize falsehood as clear falsehood and abstain from it. Fallahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa zuqan tiba'ah. Wa arina al-baqil al-baqil wa zuqan istinaam. Fallahumma na taj'ala dunya akbar hammina. Wa la mudla ba'ilmina. Wa la alam nari masirina. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant victory to Islam and to the Muslims. We ask Allah to grant freedom to all the Muslims who are being held 
and dealt with unjustly around the world. And we asked Allah Azza wa Jal to bring peace, ease, and victory to the Muslims in Syria, and to the Muslims in Palestine, and to the Muslims in Iraq, and to the Muslims in Kashmir, and the Muslims in Yemen, and the Muslims in Burma, and in Bangladesh, and in all parts of the world, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. فاللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيها بطاعتك ويهدى فيها المعصيتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر يا سميع الدعاء 